Who are these people? Uh, we're here with Pasta, everyone. You know him. You love him. Your favorite interim co-host for Jimmy Fallon. Um, you know, he's here. Um, Am but, I? I think, Am I your favorites, guys? Um, I don't know about that. I think that if they put it to a vote, you guys might vote vote in somebody. You might vote me off the island and vote somebody else in out there. So There we go. We got stories this week, uh, by the way. We got four yeah. of them. Yeah. Which... Stories? Yeah. yeah. We... Well, well, the biggest one uh, that made it hard to talk about anything else this week. We have to talk about it, but um, but I'm actually going to talk about two stories. I'm going to kind of splice a couple of things. Yeah. Um, one of them that's featuring your um, colleague pasta in reference to some of the stuff that she said online and then some stuff she had to kind of correct me on certain things that I was saying over the, the week that she had to kind of lay it on me a little bit. So, um, yeah. but obviously, oh. um, obviously <laughs> Israel Palestine conflict is the talk of the town right now. So obviously we have to yeah. talk about yeah. that. And uh, pasta's got to hang around Florida and he still needs to eat bagels occasionally. So, you know. Well, I you know <laughs> you've been hearing that I have to go back to Boca Raton, and it's already the cat's out of the bag, man. It's like you know I've spoken openly about this, and I'm yeah. not gonna lie, Colin. First of all, thank you because I thought you, you were gonna talk about my dinner, which is crow. <laughs> I have to eat crow today. Obviously, you know the 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 tweet that was sent out by uh, you know RFK Jr. Uh, really kind of just put the took the wind out of my sails, and then I was like, yeah, I, I think there's a lit. There's a shit line, right, Mr. Leahy? There's a limit, and I think it went over there. So um, thank you for being, you know, considerate and having some humility and talking about some of the things you have to be corrected on rather than yeah. the things that I need to <laughs> keep my crow <laughs> on because... Uh, Free-range no, squab, Pasta. Yeah. Right. Free-range squab. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I always say in the space, I, I, part of the thing, and I, um, I mean, we've talked offline, you know, you're definitely one of the people that I've watched that somewhat kind of encouraged me to get into this space. And I've met you personally a few times before, but biggest thing for me is I don't come into this as an expert really in much, you know, I just say, I'm just a regular guy who is a teacher by day, who just happens to care, who happen makes the connections to how our government basically fucks us over and doing what I can to make change uh, in the li little ways that I can with the platform that I have. And, you know, most of the time I'm learning shit uh, as we do this. It's often that I read, I listen, I kind of take in what people are saying, like you yeah. uh, and Fee and others, and then try to make sense of that and try to apply it in a way that makes sense. And and again, with kind of the Israel-Palestine thing, I'm, I've been very thankful, especially to read that we've had talked quite a bit about Palestine before this. So we have a some good knowledge. base, that, some knowledge at this point as to what we're talking about. But given the history of it, which we also kind of shared on this podcast before, uh, it's make, made me very staunch in my stance yeah. regarding the conflict and just and i've said this online um and i'll say it again as a black person uh whose ancestors had to go through similar stuff that the palestinians are currently going through and black people are still going through um palestinians were there for us during the george floyd protests and they generally have been there for the black community during the civil rights movement and I don't see how, as a Black person, I cannot stand in solidarity of them in large to capitalism, Zionism, all the isms that yeah. are affecting this conflict. But the, the Irish, day, too. Irish been on it, too. So, yeah. So, you know, uh, I, I brought some palate so yeah. cleansers. So it's not all Palestine. No. I figured we'd, <laughs> we'd yell at Hillary Clinton for a bit, uh, you know. And then the replicator initiative. Nothing like nothing like of uh, you know other foreign yeah. things to distract us from this. 
happening. But, but you know what? I don't know how much how long the show is going to go for. I got about an hour and change. So maybe yeah. we should start with the Palestinian stuff too as well. Yeah. Because, We're about because to here's the funny way. thing too as well, and I got to say this, that even still with my point of view of saying, all right, I'm walking away from this whole situation. I don't see there's any way I could support a person whose number one goal, right, or his number one message was to make sure we don't go to war with Russia, put himself in a position where he said he's going to unambiguously support Israel, which eventually Might. is trying to goad us into a war with Iran, right. that could lead us into a war with Russia. Russia. That's just contradicting yourself completely, so, right? I mean, it could lead to this. And this is the geopolitical ramifications we have. But at, at the end of the day, too, the sick thing is, is that that dude still, somebody pointed out to me, still might be the best option that's on the table as far as weapons in the toolbox. And that's the, the crazy thing about the whole situation. That just shows you how broken and how fucked up our whole system is right now that you have people like, you know, Nikki Haley going, wipe them out, you know? Yeah. And, um, right. I mean, Tulsi's tweets too, as well, just right. shit, right. shit. So, I mean, yeah. we're in a really, right. you know, with back to your intro with Misty going, we are fucked. We are fucked. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. right. We are yeah. fucked. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, no, no speaking of, right. speaking of fucked, uh, you have this documentary out, which I wanted to sh showcase the trailer before we get into other stuff. Um, and tell people to go watch it, you know. So this thing, thank you. Which you're you're going back, I think. When? When are you heading back? Next month, right? Well, right now it's we were going to go to. I was supposed to go to Argentina for the first round, and we've now moved Argentina to the second round. So it looks like on the twentieth okay. is the set day. And the thing that's really sad, though, uh, Reef, is the fact is that they're not verifying me or monetizing me on this channel yet. Yeah. For some reason, they're running all the stall tactics and whatnot. So it's got to come up with another plan, maybe going to Rumble. Um, and the, these these videos tend to do a little bit better on Rumble because people are paying more attention to Lahaina. Yeah. Because they're looking at Lahaina, like Gaza, as another 15-minute city, possibly, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, here, I'll, I'll roll this bean footage here, and we'll be back in two minutes. We finally made it. We're here in Maui. Just a couple miles up the road over there. That's Lahaina Beach. An outrageous fire broke out, killing hundreds, if not thousands, with thousands more it? missing. They feel that number uh, of 150 people dead is a slap in the face. Thousands are missing. And when they say missing, they just haven't been identified yet. We're going to talk to the citizens, the locals, the indigenous people here at Lahaina to get some answers. They've been telling people, don't come back they here. Can you can't breathe. Yeah. You can't drink the water. Trying to scare people away. And that seems like they want to have a land grab. And people are very, very suspicious of this. The locals, the, the people who lost everything, those are the ones who are suspicious. And they want answers. And they're not going to stop. Why did the emergency sirens not get sounded? Why did they run out of water? Why were the police blocking people in so they couldn't escape from the deadly flames? Can you see the fence here? That fence that you got right over there is going ripping all the way around and about so people can't come in through the other side to see what's going on. Uh, they're not allowing anybody in unless you have a house that's standing. Even the people who lost their houses, they told us yesterday, they're not allowed to go into the zone. So they can't have any closure whatsoever. Why is the governor saying that Maui is closed when the whole island is dependent on tourism? Why are FEMA and Red Cross dragging their feet? At the end of the day, we do know this for sure. The response, the emergency response has been crap. It feels like it's an orchestrated gentrification of sorts. They want people out, they want the locals gone, they want the indigenous people gone, and they want this land. Finally, we're also here to understand what we can do to help these people stay in Lahaina. Lahaina has a history that is rich in tradition. Not just locals lived here, but indigenous people lived in Lahaina. Lahaina was the capital before the American empire had taken over. They're not wanted here anymore. That they're not getting the necessary means to stay and fight and live where they've lived for so long. And Lahaina, that is just destroyed, would be a perfect prime spot for them to go, let's just wipe it all out and let's build up from scratch. We need to understand what we need to do as citizens here in America to help these people today. I'm Craig Pasta Jardula. Let's go find out. Well, there you go, Pasta. You, you did some good stuff, man. Um, I watched it. Fantastic stuff. Um, you know, anything you want to say before we head into Thank other you, stuff? 
it, uh, you know, it just, uh, you know, I'm looking to go back soon because uh, we have to pick up a lot of the pieces. A lot of the Red Cross programs as far as housing have ended. People will be thrown out in the streets, have to force to leave Maui, maybe head to the mainland. Um, they're going to try to shut down a lot of the mutual aid things that we talked about. And we still don't have answers. You know, I spoke to somebody today who was, who was in the video. Well, her name is Tia Tina Lea. She's the water woman, I call her right now. She's actually done a lot of studies with the Bill Gates mosquitoes. Um, and um, it, it's just sad. It's a sad story. Um, it's hard. And there's a lot of people dealing with a lot of trauma over there. So as I get back there to try to pick up the pieces and tell the next part of the story, knowing that it's a, a long story that it's going to play out over the next several years, it's just really uh, it's touching. I'm, I'm proud of the work I was able to do. And I'm glad that Jimmy Dore has given me his megaphone to get out there and uh, tell the story. Um, but a lot like the emotion I feel when I listen to Jesse Jett's song about Lahaina, um, it's hard not to uh, feel that pain that the people of Lahaina are facing and the people who've lost loved ones. A lot of children died alone uh, and they were sent home and there was no warning of this. So I encourage everybody to go watch this video. Like I said, you don't have to listen to or believe Craig Pasta Jardula. You can listen to the people of Lahaina in which I was able to capture in this movie uh, and get their story out. So please, if you haven't watched it, go watch it, share it, get it out there and any way you can help support. Uh, there's links to support, um, you know, and uh, yep. please do so. We have your um, documentary down in the down in that doobly do uh, for people who want to find it and are too lazy to go look it gotcha. up. Um, description, whatever people want to call it. Mm -hmm. But um, 